Hello and welcome to Written Words. Having made a lesson on how to begin a piece of writing, I've now just recorded another lesson on ways to end a piece of writing effectively. And as part of that lesson, we looked at endings from a number of books. The opening sentences of many classic books are very well known. But what about the endings? They're perhaps not so well known. So I thought this might make a very good quiz. So here are the final sentences of 10 very well known books. See how many of them, if any, you recognise. Number one says, it was the devious cruising Rachel that in her retracing search after her missing children only found another orphan. Number two. As soon as they had strength, they arose, joined hands again and went on. Number three. Only the rattle and rasp of old brambles against each other and the triumphant howl of the wind. Number four. From a distant country had come, in the very nick of time, a message that took me out of the danger of the snow sleep and the jaws of the wolf. Number five. I believe it nonetheless, because that nook is in a church and she was weak and erring. Number six. He had ecstasies innumerable that other children can never know, but he was looking through the window at the one joy from which he must forever be barred. Number seven. He was soon borne away by the waves and lost in darkness and distance. Number eight. And together they slipped away, running easily down through the wood, where the first primroses were beginning to bloom. Number nine. My troubles are all over, and I am at home, and often, before I am quite awake, I fancy I'm still in the orchard at Birtwick, standing with my old friends under the apple trees. And number ten. He drew a deep breath. Well, I'm back, he said. So how did you get on? Did you recognise any of them at all? I think I would have found that one very hard indeed. Here are the answers then. The first one. It was the devious cruising Rachel that in her retracing search after her missing children only found another orphan is from Herman Melville's Moby Dick. The second one. As soon as they had strength, they arose, joined hands again and went on, is from Thomas Hardy's Tess of the D'Urbervilles. The third one, only the rattle and rasp of old brambles against each other and the triumphant howl of the wind, is from The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Number four, from a distant country had come in the very nick of time, a message that took me out of the danger of the snow sleep and the jaws of the wolf was from Dracula by Bram Stoker. Number five, I believe it nonetheless because that nook is in a church and she was weak and erring, came from Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Number six, he had ecstasies innumerable that other children can never know. But he was looking through the window at the one joy from which he must forever be barred. Came from Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. Number seven. He was soon borne away by the waves and lost in darkness and distance. Came from Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Number eight. And together they slipped away, running easily down through the wood, 
where the first primroses were beginning to bloom, was from Watership Down by Richard Adams. Number nine, my troubles are all over and I am at home. And often, before I'm quite awake, I fancy I am still in the orchard at Birtwick, standing with my old friends under the apple trees. And that was from Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. And finally, he drew a deep breath. Well, I'm back, he said, is the ending of the final book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. If you got one of those, congratulations. If you got more than one, that's amazing. And if you'd like to know more about how to write a good ending to your story or other piece of writing, take a look at the lessons available on our website, writtenwords.uk. Thank you for watching.